Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm going to take a small break from trying to beat Mewtwo's time, I think, and we're going to answer a bit of a different question. Everyone loves Eevee and its evolutions or Eeveelutions, but I want to know which one will be the best. And as we learned from the Legendary Birds, it's not always so obvious, but I do anticipate Jolteon, our current Pokemon, having trouble with Brock, so I've decided to go first because Brock is oftentimes where you lose a ton of time. So my guess before I've done any of these is that Jolteon will be the slowest, but will it be slow? Can it keep up with the legendaries? Let's find out. Now each evolution has one stat that's absolutely spectacular, and in Jolteon's case it's its speed. In Generation 1, that makes a big difference because our critical hit ratio is really, really high. Just over 25%, or 1 in 4 of our moves should critical hit. And that's going to help against the first gym leader, Brock. Now, I didn't even attempt to try this one minimum battles. I battled all the bug catchers and saw if I just battled them, could I beat Brock? The answer is no. Now, people are going to say Jolteon has this move or that move. But remember, yellow version and red and blue are a little bit different. The evolutions especially. So we don't actually have access yet to Tail Whip. But we do get Sand Attack. And so I don't think this will take as long as everyone thinks. But at level 9, it wasn't working. In fact, it didn't work at level 10 or level 11 either. And there's not a lot to say about why it didn't work. I mean, Jolteon doesn't have great attack. Quick attack is only base 40 power. And Geodude uses Defense Curl, firstly. But both it and Onix have extremely good defense. Plus, their attacks aren't bad. So it's pretty difficult to do enough damage to knock them out. Sand Attack, of course, helps. When you have six Sand Attacks... They're only hitting like a quarter of the time, which is my critical hit ratio. But as you can see, it's not really working. So I battled a few more trainers. I battled the junior trainer and rival 1A. So at level 12, I actually took two attempts to do this. And I know it's a bit of a spoiler to say that, but again, there's not really much for me to say. You get critical hits. Good luck with tackle misses or defense curl again and again. And the biggest X factor is Onyx. Onyx can use tackle, which you don't want to see. Bide is okay, and Screech is kind of the best, but alternating between Bide and Screech is kind of what you want, and I didn't get very many attacks from Onyx with Tackle at all, and so I'm able to start racking up damage. Bide, by the way, cannot miss, but Tackle can, so Tackle, when it hits, especially if you've been hit with Screech, can do a lot of damage, but thankfully, it took me only two attempts at level 12 to win, and so we have hemorrhaged quite a bit of time, that being said, for an electric Pokemon, I'm very impressed with how quick it was. But now that we've finally beaten Brock, we can move on to Misty or Rival 2. Since I have excellent special and an electric move, I think Misty will be a good choice, and I was right. Staryu isn't a 1 at KO, but it still doesn't do much damage. Then I get a critical hit on Starmie, so that's a bit better than average luck. But it didn't hit me with Bubble Beam, which was nice, and I knock it out. First try victory. Wasn't really worried about Misty, and to be frank, I'm not super worried about Rival 2 either, because Pidgeotto is usually the most annoying Pokemon, and Thundershock would be very good against that. In fact, I crit and won a KO Pidgeotto. Abra isn't a 1 a KO, it is very good special, but it can't attack. Rattata was a 1 a KO, no crit needed. Then Bulbasaur, I'm gonna go for Quick Attack. I get a critical hit, which is pretty good. Then I get another critical hit. I'm not really worried about Bulbasaur, what it's doing, because, well, Vine Whip did nothing, and that's its best attack. So that was a very, very easy fight. And this is a part of the game Jolteon especially is going to excel at, because our next major fight is Rival 3, essentially identical to this fight. And we're going to pick up Body Slam. Because of Brock, we're not at minimum battles anyway, and to be fair, minimum battles is totally arbitrary. Body Slam will be extremely helpful, Jolteon doesn't have a super diverse move pool. I mean, it will at the end, but in the early and mid game, Jolteon is going to have to rely on electric moves and body slam. So we need body slam and we're going to get it. And then we can battle rival three, which I anticipate being even easier than rival two. Well, Pidgeotto gets some payback with a critical hit quick attack, but I don't even need a critical hit to knock it out. That's great. Now I decide to be crafty and go for quick attack against Raticate to see how much it would do. I got a crit. And it went for quick attack, so good thing I did. Then I go for another quick attack and knock it out, and I don't think that crit mattered, but you can see how many critical hits I'm getting. In my opinion, this is one of Jolteon's greatest assets. 
Anyway, Body Slam 1 it KOs Kadabra and I outspeed, so that's awesome. And critical hit again on Ivysaur. It went for Leech Seed, but I wasn't really worried about it attacking either. And that is rival number three. So far, so good, but it's about to get even better. Lieutenant Surge is going to be pretty easy. I anticipate using one or two Body Slams on each Pokemon. Clearly, two are going to be needed for Voltorb, and yeah, Tackle did great damage, although Sonic Boom could have done 20. Pikachu, somehow that X speed went first. Not really sure how that worked. But anyway, I knock it out with a single Body Slam. Raichu might be three, and yeah, Raichu can't really do all that much to me in this game. It did require three. I went for a quick attack to make sure nothing funny happened. And I lost all of nine HP, beat Lieutenant Surge, but more importantly, I have Thunderbolt. And that is huge. Because I have access to arguably Jolteon's most powerful attack for the final five gyms, which is most of the hard parts of the game. I guess I should mention the Hiker with the two Geodudes and the Graveler. Very, very frustrating battle. And you could try and knock it out with Body Slam, but the easiest way to do it is just to reset again and again. Use Sand Attack and hope he misses twice with Self Destruct. It only took me a handful of attempts, and I will mention that Graveler does have to miss, so one of the Geodudes can hit you. Not Graveler, though, a self-destruct from that will knock you out at full health. Anyway, it didn't happen. In fact, I didn't get hit with a single self-destruct, but with some other attacks. And so I'm able to make it to Celadon, and here I had to think. Usually I like to go to Giovanni first, but with Body Slam and Thunderbolt as my two main attacks, and unfortunately, nothing is really on the horizon to help. I mean, eventually Double Kick, but that's a really long ways away. So I thought what might be easier is actually to battle Erika. And no, this isn't because I forgot it in the Alakazam run. Erika, I didn't anticipate being too tricky. And I was kind of right, I guess. I mean, in the first battle, I got hit with Sleep Powder and decided to reset. But just before I did, you see how much a critical hit Razor Leaf did? It's not that bad. The second battle goes a bit better. I get a Sleep Powder miss and then a wrap. Which, to be honest, is the best case scenario, especially when you combine it with the fact that Tangela went for Constrict. But Vileplume hit me with Sleep Powder. I woke up right away and then it went for Petal Dance. I won't get a single critical hit. And it comes oh so close to knocking me out. But I do win on 2 HP. So perhaps what I'm about to do next I should have done first. But in the end it was second try victory. Maybe wasted a little bit of time doing these out of order. And yes I'm about to go battle rival 4 for some more experience points. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. I went for Body Slam just out of curiosity. Would it knock out Growlithe? It doesn't. Comes close. Thunderbolt would have. Body Slam does knock out Kadabra. Body Slam almost knocks out the Ivysaur, albeit with a critical hit. And for good measure, Thunderbolt. There we are. Rival 4. Easy. But there's not really much more to do. I don't want to go all the way up the tower and back down. That would waste time. So let's just try our hardest. The Rocket Hideout, even with the Sandshrew Sandslash, is not really a big deal, but they don't resist Body Slam. Onyx and Rhyhorn do, so let's see how this goes. I get good luck on the first hit that I get a Paralysis. It didn't end up mattering, and funny enough, the Onyx never really ends up attacking. I mean, Onyx doesn't really have anything that can hit me with. Eventually, Giovanni goes for Rage. That's what I want to see. I tried to use Sand Attack because there's a glitch where if Rage misses once, it will never hit, or almost never hit again. It failed for some reason. Is that a Gen 1 miss, or some other mechanic? This took a lot longer than I was hoping, because I didn't get any critical hits. So my power points are running low, but we have a ton of HP for Rhyhorn. And as if the game heard my complaint about not getting any critical hits, critical hit, Horn Attack doesn't do all that much. Don't get a second critical hit, but that's actually doing really nice damage. Way lower defense for Rhyhorn than Onyx. Guard spec is nice. There's the critical hit I want to see. And horn attack, I'm not worried. And I think that's it for Giovanni because Kangaskhan has really bad special. I don't even think I need a critical hit and I didn't. One hit KO and that went really well. Way better than I expected. And now that we've beaten Giovanni, easily make it through Pokemon Tower and we've done everything we need to do before we head to Fuchsia. And sometimes with really strong Pokemon, I'll go battle rival Fievel before Koga, but... Jolteon isn't quite in the same tier as the Pokemon I've tried that with, so I'm going to play it safe and go and battle Koga. Like with a few of the runs lately, Koga was actually a little bit less scary to me than the Pokemon in his gym, 
And it's weird that Koga's gym, the only two mandatory trainers, have not a single poison Pokemon. Poison gas, maybe. And that's not some joke. They literally have an attack called poison gas. But it's always been odd to me that Koga's gym is full of psychic Pokemon. Not really sure. And they have decent special. So they're quite annoying to knock out. In fact, Thunderbolt and Body Slam do roughly about the same damage. And thankfully, I had the full restore from the Safari Zone. So I can fully heal up and attempt to battle Koga. All right, moment of truth. One in KO? No, very close. I don't know if that's a range, and of course, smog poisons. That's unfortunate. Hilariously, though, we do knock out Muck in one hit, but that's because we got a critical hit. But Muck is a much scarier Pokemon than coughing, so I'll take that. We also knock out the second coughing in one hit, albeit again, probably because of the crit. And now a critical hit, I could win this battle pretty easily. I don't get it, and that's concerning, it's not even doing half, Sludge does very good damage, plus I'm poisoned, pretty sure I'll need a crit to win, and yeah, please don't hit me, uh, okay. So, first try, we didn't win. I could level up a little bit more and make this more consistent or use rare candies, but I think that would be unoptimal, and I mean, I'm a sliver of health away, that Weezing uses a different attack, I probably win, let's try again. Once again, coughing takes two hits, but this time it misses with smoke screen. That's good. Muck, don't get the crit. And then minimize, please hit. Okay, that sucks. Please hit. Okay, and poison gas, that really sucks. And the crit came a little late. Would have knocked it out anyway, but okay, bye bye Muck. And I'm at full HP, albeit I'm still poisoned. Now that was a more opportune crit, so we just have Weezing to go. A crit or some better move selection from Weezing, and I will win. All right, show me the crit. No, X attack is okay. Come on. Oh gosh, that's so close. And all right, we're good. We're good. So now that we've beaten Koga, I could go battle Blaine, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go battle rival Fival. So far, he hasn't been so bad. However, now he's got a Venusaur with Razor Leaf, and that is definitely a lot more frustrating than what we've had previously. Once again, the battle starts off really, really easy. Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, and look at that, Thunderbolt. Now, I didn't think Body Slam would be a 1-8 KO, so I went for Thunderbolt, curious how much it would do. It did half, so if I lost, I could use that if I wanted to. It went for Disable, which sucks in this generation. It just randomly picks an attack, and it picked Tail Whip, a move I never would have used. Anyway, one Pokemon left. Now, I really don't want to see Razor Leaf. Body Slam, no crit. Vine Whip gets a crit. Cool, no crit. Still no Razor Leaf, that's good. Here's the crit, and it somehow still survives. That's great. But unfortunately, Venusaur Leech Seed is a little too late, and I knock it out. So one out of three battles with Razor Leaf, we didn't see it a single time. That's pretty good, but, you know, I'm kind of thinking that's going to come back to haunt me later. Whatever. Later is later. We've won, and I'm actually going to do something I rarely do, which is focus a little bit on this Giovanni battle. Two of the four Pokemon are immune to electric attacks, so this could be somewhat difficult. However, this is why Tail Whip is useful. I can use it to lower defense and make the Rhyhorn and Needle Queen a little bit better. First things first, buy Nidorino, buy Kangaskhan. Now I use Tail Whip and Rhyhorn also uses Tail Whip. And I actually notice I'm much lower on body slams. I probably should have used the Ether. That was obviously a mistake because even after four body slams, including a crit, I'm unable to knock out Rhyhorn, so I may lose this because I have to use Quick Attack against Nidoqueen. So I'm going to use some Tail Whips, and Nidoqueen also really decides it likes using Tail Whip. It actually uses three, so that's four defense drops. When it finally hits me with a Poison Sting, it does more than half of my remaining HP, but thankfully, too little too late. And with Quick Attack... Ironically, ended up making the battle a lot slower, but hey, I like that. That was kind of neat. We have knocked out Giovanni, and now we just have three more gym leaders to go. And I want to do Blaine before Sabrina again, just because, I don't know, Sabrina always makes me nervous. I want to definitely outspeed her Pokemon, and when you beat Blaine, you get a boost in special. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not too nervous about Blaine. Some Pokemon struggle, but with Thunderbolt, I think I should be fine against his fire Pokemon. Well, Growlithe is a 1 KO with Thunderbolt. That's a good start, but Ponyta isn't. And Fire Spin, which lasts one, two. Somehow he can use a Super Potion while I'm still trapped. 
And three, so that wasted a bit of time, but really wasn't that big a deal. All right, that's doing about half to wrap. Oh, okay, super potion, probably won't knock it out, and a failed growl. Wouldn't matter if it hit or not, but all right. One more, Arcanine, takedown and fire blast is what I don't want to see. Thunderbolt does not look like it's doing half, more like 40%. Takedown, I didn't want to see, but maybe it'll be a 2 with KO now? No, Ember's okay. Fire Blast probably would have knocked me out, but all right, we have won, and not only have we won, we have Double Kick, which won't help us against Sabrina, but against Giovanni, it will. However, to get to Giovanni, we need to get through Sabrina. All right, Body Slam won at KO's Kadabra, good start. Does not want to KO Mr. Mime. It uses Barrier, so I go for Thunderbolt, knocks it out. Venomoth doesn't have Amazing Special, so I'm going to go for Thunderbolt since it does more damage usually. And it does with a crit. Probably mattered, but okay, we're at full health for Alakazam. I'm liking my chances here. All right, Body Slam. Oh, that was so close with that crit. Hyper Potion, of course. All right, let's try again. Paralysis, good. Now, anything but a critical hit Psychic and I win? Psywave, that does like nothing. Nothing, usually. Okay, that did quite a bit, but it doesn't matter. We won anyway. So, we have made it through all the gym leaders. We are missing one, Giovanni. And now that we have Double Kick, I don't hate my chances. I also have Mimic in case this takes many attempts so I can Mimic Dig or something. But I'm thinking this should work. I don't know. Could be a very interesting battle. All right, first things first, I'm going to use Agility. The reason for this is the Badge Boost. Glitch! Don't worry too much about it. I don't use it much in this run. Essentially, it's a problem with Generation 1. Basically, when you get gym badges, you get a stat boost, and when your stats are modified, it reapplies that boost again. So I basically up my stats by about 40%, give or take. And I get a crit, which ignores those boosts, but you can see how much more powerful my attack is because the non-crit the next turn does just about as much damage as the crit. So you can see it really, really does make a difference. Dugtrio is the only Pokemon with an actual ground move, so I need to knock it out in one hit? No, but I pair- Okay. That was pretty lucky. Pretty unlikely you get both the Paralysis and the 25% chance it doesn't attack, but that bodes well for us because Nidoking and Nidoqueen really just have powerful normal attacks, nothing ground type. So Body Slam looks to be about a 3 KO, Tail Whip, not great, but boosts my stats a bit further. Get the paralysis, this time it still attacks, and you can see Body Slam does decent enough damage. So down goes Nido Queen. Nido King has Thrash, which would be pretty bad with a defense drop. Well, clutch critical hit could be a 2 KO if we got another one. Uh, guard spec, I like to see that. Another critic. Oh, just missed knocking it out. Poison Sting was the absolute thing I wanted to see. Being poisoned, not great for Rhydon, but. I do knock out Nidoking, so now I just have to knock out Rhydon before the poison damage. It should just go for Fissure because good AI says ground, good against electric. But 1 KO moves do not affect Pokemon that are faster. I'm faster as you can see. So I just need to knock this thing out before I faint and poison only does 1 16th instead of 1 8th. So it should be fine. So I'm going to keep going for double kick as Rhydon does essentially nothing. You will notice I'm doing a little bit less damage now. That's because I leveled up. Leveling up cancels the badge boost glitch, so I'm back to my regular, proper attack. And in more difficult runs, I manipulate my experience points so I won't level up in the middle of the battle like this. However, as you can see, it didn't make a big difference. Eight gym leaders down, six battles to go, but like I always say, this is just the regular season. The playoffs are around the corner, and as I save, I'm at 3 hours 23 minutes. Anything under 4 hours is really, really good. So that would be nice if Jolteon can do that, but like I said, six tough trainers standing in our way. Let's try and get past them. All right, Pidgeot has been pretty good for us, and we knock it out in one hit. Don't know if that crit mattered, don't think so. Unfortunately, we have Rhyhorn now, and we do have Double Kick to deal with it. However, unlike Giovanni's Rhyhorn, it does actually attack us with Stomp. Somewhat decent damage, 30 is not bad. Thankfully, the second time I use Double Kick, it goes for Horn Drill. And by the third double kick, it's knocked out. Now we have Gyarados. Obviously, want to KO with Thunderbolt. I'm not sure if Growlithe will be... It is. It is. That's good. Growlithe is a one to KO. I mean, crit, maybe. But now we have to deal with Alakazam. Do we outspeed it is a big question. We do. That's good. And about half damage is what I want to see. Psybeam does decent enough damage. And we knock it. No. No. Oh, 
that's not good. All right, well, I think that's the battle. We have nine HP for Venusaur. All right, come on, critical. Oh no, yeah, we're done. Poison powder, it hits, doesn't matter. Vine whip, yeah, okay. So this isn't gonna work. And unfortunately, I do try this again, but as it turns out, Venusaur really is a big sticking point because Body Slam just simply isn't doing enough damage. I'm under leveled, 65 base attack is nothing special and it's not super effective or anything. So I decided to use two of my rare candies early, since like I mentioned earlier, at level 48, I get access to Pin Missile. And although Pin Missile isn't a great attack, it is quadruple super effective. Yes, Bug is super effective against Poison in Generation 1. Nowadays, it's not very effective. That was Swap. Not sure why, but who cares? So now that you saw another unsuccessful battle, Let's try after using the rare candies and see if that works better. All right, well, Pidgeot's not gonna be a problem. Rhyhorn, here's something else I should mention. When one hit of double kick is critical, both are. That's a generation one thing. It's true of every multi-turn attack and it almost knocked out Rhyhorn in a single hit. That's really, really good. Stomp's still doing decent damage, 27. So I knock it out. We're obviously gonna knock out Gyarados. I was thinking of setting up badge boost against Growlithe, but opt not to because I got burned last time, literally. So I just knock it out with a Thunderbolt. Now here's where maybe I messed up. I thought I might use agility to badge boost later, so I had gotten rid of Body Slam for Pin Missile. And Body Slam probably would have been a little more helpful in this situation. Pin Missile, while super effective, I need to hit at least three times and I don't. And then Alakazam uses Reflect. I should have switched to Thunderbolt, but I was thinking I was going to reset and swap out Agility for Body Slam. So I just went for Pin Missile, just because I was curious how much it would do now. And Alakazam goes for Reflect again, and then I get a 4 turn. So a 3, 4, so 9 hits altogether. Knocks out Alakazam with the Reflect. Not bad, but how much damage will it do to Venusaur? That's the big question. Will I get a crit? 1? Only 2? No. What an opportunity wasted. Thankfully, it goes for growth. Now I just need a few hits. One, two, come on, one more. Yes, okay. So you can see how good Pin Missile is. The quadruple super effective, very useful. First attempt with the new strategy was successful. We still have some rare candies left for later on. And that's kind of all I have to say for now. I mean, nothing really going on in Victory Road. Let's get to the Elite Four. Cue the ice theme, Laurel Lee. All right, do we want to KO Dugong? We do. Very good sign. That means we will for sure knock out Cloyster. I'm not sure about Slowbro. Oh, we do. That's good. Now for Jinx, I could opt to go for Pin Missile, but I think Thunderbolt is safer. So I go for Thunderbolt and I get the Paralysis. It's like I have Body Slam. Ice Punch does about 41 or exactly 41. And now I'm curious how much Pin Missile would do and it hits once, twice. So Pin Missile looks like it would do more if I could get more hits. Super Potion, I'm gonna go for Pin Missile again and hope for better luck, and I got a crit, so that should be good. And now I just have to knock out Lapras because Blizzard and Hydro Pump don't look like a fun time. Well, that's not that close, and Body Slam does quite a bit, but 54 HP is plenty. Next Thunderbolt knocks it out, so Laurel Lee doesn't look to be too big an issue. And we move on to Bruno, who would be tough in yellow version, but without any ground moves for any of his Pokemon, well, specifically the two Onyx, I think I should be fine since I have Double Kick. And so as the battle starts, I'm just going to use it. And the worst Onyx can do is Rock Throw. And that does very little. The other move it has is Rage. Okay, we got both. And by that point, it's already knocked out. Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee have Awful Special. And so we knock out Hitmonchan. And we knock out Hitmonlee. I don't think that crit mattered at all. Now we just have to do the same thing to the second Onyx that we did to the first Onyx and hope we don't lose too much HP. I went for agility, trying to be sneaky and boost my stats. Big mistake. Bruno loves to raise defense and that's exactly what happened. So now double kick's doing like nothing. Thankfully, Onyx hasn't attacked yet and turns out it never will. We knock it out with double kick and now we just have to knock out this Machamp. I do not think it's going to be a one hit KO, but just no critical hit submission. We should be good. All right. Yeah, it's not a 1 KO like I suspected. Submission? W wow. Holy moly. Almost didn't even need a critical hit. Wow, like one more hit from one of the Onyx and I could have been done. Yo, I haven't lost to Bruno in a long time. That would have been well, good for content, but bad for me. 
Anyway, it didn't happen, but yeah, Jolteon doesn't match up well against Bruno. Thank goodness it's Bruno. But another trainer I don't think it matches up particularly well against is Agatha. My best move is a special attack. Agatha's Gengar have high special. And I'm not sure if I outspeed, I should. And that's why I call it the Agatha Lottery. If you get outsped, Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, it's great. Hopefully we don't see any of that and it's just a quick and easy fight. I doubt it. All right, how much does Thunderbolt do? Not much, like a third, that's not great. And yeah, Confuse Ray, of course. All right, just please don't hit yourself and of course you're gonna hit yourself in confusion. And now I'm asleep. So yeah, I think that's the run. All right, just wake up first turn. No, of course you can't do that. And okay, Confuse Ray, I can deal with. Can you wake up this turn? No, but still Confuse Ray. All right, that still works. And hey, you woke up and hey, there's the Dream Eater. That was good timing, Jolteon. Now, snap out of Confusion, hit it with Thunderbolt, no crit, so it's still around. But here's where I get just a little bit too clever. I wanted to see how much Pin Missile would do. Again, it's going to deal neutral damage because the super effectiveness against the Poison type. Even though Gengar has terrible defense, it does nothing. And even with three hits, it survives on like one HP. And of course, I'm punished and put to sleep. That was a costly lesson. All right, now of course it's going to go for Dream. Oh, it withdrew. That's pretty good. Golbat can use Haze, which will wake me up, and its only attack is Wing Attack, so this isn't a terrible matchup. All right, well, I don't wake up, and of course, critical hit. I mean, what else would you expect? I'm still asleep in Supersonic. And it just seems like in some battles with the Agatha Lottery, nothing goes your way, and this is feeling like one of them. However, after I don't wake up again, it goes for Haze. That's going to remove the confusion and the sleep. Very weird move in Generation 1, and I should be able to knock it out in a single Thunderbolt, but I decide to get greedy again and try and boost my stats by using three agilities. Agility 1, Wing Attack. Agility 2, Supersonic Fail. You know what? Two is good enough. Knock out the Golbat. And I level up. That was so unnecessary. Oh my goodness. I didn't even think about that. Again, badge boosts are cancelled when you level up. So I knock out Gengar, but those extra agilities just wasted time. Thankfully, Thunderbolt's doing about half the Haunter. Hypnosis misses, and I knock out Haunter. So now we just got Arbok and Gengar. I'd love this to be a 1 KO, but it's not even close. Arbok goes for Glare, which I think can affect me. It just has a 25% chance to miss in Generation 1. And I knock out the Arbok, but we only have 83 HP. Two Nightshades will knock me out. Toxic, Confuse Ray, a lot can go wrong here. All right, it's doing about a third again. Dream Eater, I can work with. Okay, crit would have been nice, but yes, Toxic is excellent. Tons of mistakes, tons of bad ideas. And we still win, which is why we call it the Agatha Lottery. Sometimes the luck doesn't go in your favor, and sometimes it does. Kind of saw a bit of both. But now I'm really worried about Lance. Especially without Body Slam. Dragonair, funny enough. They have Hyper Beam. I don't really know how much damage I'm going to do to them. And even Dragonite could be an issue. So I'm going to use my Rare Candies. I have five remaining, and that's all I have to say. Let's see how it goes. All right, against Gyarados, no, I only have four left. I forgot to Elixir, no. Well, we can knock it out, but Dragonair, I'm not going to be able to use Thunderbolt. I need a lot of them. So I guess I'll go for Double Kick. Oh, that's going to be bad. Yeah, it's doing nothing. Slam does decent. Still doing nothing. Slam still doing decent, but I'm close now. Still don't knock it out, and then Dragon Rage. So I'm at 49 health. For three Pokemon? Yeah, it's going to go great. All right, so I know I lost, so I'm just going to go for Thunderbolt anyway. And eh, it doesn't do great damage either. I tank the hit for now. I go for Double Kick, and yeah, there's Hyper Beam. So, okay, usually I like to reshow the Elite Four battle, but I think considering how bad that was, let's just skip ahead to Lance again and see what a regular Lance fight would look like. However, while I remembered to use the elixir, I forgot to use rare candies. So now I'm battling Lance five levels lower. Is this going to work? Well, let's find out. All right, so Gyarados, of course, I'm going to knock out in one hit. But you know what I'm going to do against Dragonair? Let's go for an agility, boost my special by a little bit. Maybe it'll make it a two-hit KO. So I'm going to do that. It goes for Dragon Rage. Thunderbolt. Yeah, it's still not doing half, so... I guess I'll go for another agility. Of course, it's gone for two straight Dragon Rages, so I have like no HP left. Thunderbolt doesn't knock it out, it heals, and then I'm knocked out two turns later. All right, 
So one battle without power points, one battle without rare candies. What if we, get this, did both of those things? Would Lance be not as bad as he seems? Only one way to find out. Obligatory mention of Gyarados and goodbye. Now here's the moment of truth. Do I do half? Does not look like it to me. Slam's doing 37. Ugh. I'm going to go for an agility and hyper beam, of course. I'm at a nice amount of health, but... This isn't looking good for the rest of the battle. The fact that used Hyper Beam means I can now use a second agility. And so I'll for sure knock out Dragonair. I'm not too sure about the second one though. I kind of need some luck. All right. Well, Thunderbolt's doing over half. So that's great. Hyper Beam Isla. Oh, I didn't. Okay. You know what? Badge boosting, like I said, all the stats, including defense. Very good. So now we've made it to Aerodactyl. Probably should have used another agility, by the way, but whatever. We knock out Aerodactyl. Now we just have to knock out Dragonite without it hitting me. That seems likely. All right, well, I'm liking the damage Thunderbolt's doing. That's doing over half, and of course, Hyper Beam hits. So we got farther. It was somewhat of a decent battle. I don't know, though. Is this a strategy that can actually work? You know what? I'm not racing against Mewtwo. I'm going to go back to Celadon. I'm going to buy the TM for Reflect. Jolteon can learn it. Reflect would make Lance and the Champion a lot more consistent. And I'm not sure what move I'd even delete. But I think it's good to have in the toolbox. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to backtrack and do that. And now I just have to make it back to Lance again. Funny enough, in the run just before this one, I finally lost to Agatha. I had some superbly good luck against her so far. But... But it did run out in the attempt before this one. So that's good to know. I didn't ever lose to Bruno, though. The closest I came was that first battle, which you already saw. Every other battle, the Machamp just decided not to use submission. Bruno just attacks randomly anyway, so it's just a 1 in 4 chance. And Agatha, I mean, commentating Agatha battles can be fun. But the truth of the matter is, when you have such a difficult battle after her, they kind of lose a little bit of that suspense. Because even if we have a really clutch battle and a lot of cool things happen, it really means nothing if we can't actually make it past Lance. So once again, you'll have to enjoy it sped up in the background, but we've made it to Lance again. This time though, I'm going to get rid of Double Kick. I don't see myself using it, and I have been using Agility. So I'm going to get rid of Double Kick. I'm going to teach Reflect. And that may be bad against the Rhydon, but I haven't even made it past Lance. I mean, I need Thunderbolt and Pin Missiles between Agility and Double Kick. Agility seems to be more useful for Lance. So let's add in the Reflect. Hopefully it all works out. Lance Battle, take four. Obligatory Gyarados mention. And I'm going to go for Reflect right away against Dragonair. Not for Slam, which I wasn't so worried about. But I was hoping for actually a Hyper Beam there. And then I could start spamming Agility. Because I didn't get Hyper Beam, I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. It went for Dragon Rage. That's... Well, honestly, the move I least want to see because it ignores my Reflect and does 40 damage anyway. Now, I know Lance may heal, but I'm going to go for Thunderbolt and hey, critical hit. Okay, I was rewarded for my, I don't know, impatience, I guess. All right, another Thunderbolt. Hyper Beam misses. That's actually really good. I don't mind a Hyper Beam miss at all. And hey, if we get another crit, <laughs> yes, okay. Made it to Aerodactyl again and once again, one hit KO. So... With the Reflect, we actually might beat Dragonite. Okay, Thunderbolt's just doing under half the Dragonite. And Hyper Beam? I'm good. And here's where I made a mistake. I should have gone for Thunderbolt. I went for Agility, thinking about not wanting Dragonite to heal. But opponent's items don't have priority, so he couldn't have healed anyway. Whatever, this will be more than enough to knock it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Wow, that was so bad bad holy moly whatever we won but now thinking about the final battle was double kick the right call will this move set be enough can i beat the champion i don't know let's see all right so against pidgeot because it's only attacks or flying attacks i'm gonna go for reflect and then i'm gonna set up three agility so i have all the badge boosts it's not gonna do very much damage to me at all if i see sky attack i'm gonna attack thankfully i don't see it I have all my agilities and the Reflect. Like I've said in previous videos, Reflect lasts the entire battle. So this should be good. Bye bye, Birdie. What a weird reference. Anyway, 
I need pin missile to hit more than twice. Once? Twice? Okay, that's half damage. No. No, not psychic. No special drop. Oh, good. 33% chance of special drop. All right. Now I should knock it out. I think I only need minimum two, which is the least you can get, and it works. Okay. So 116, not great. You know what? I'm kind of nervous about Rhydon, to be perfectly honest, too. Because I have to use Pin Missile. And, oh no, this was a mistake. That did like nothing, and I got four hits. Horn Drill is fine, but... Man, this is going to take a long time, and... You know, I could commentate this exciting back and forth, but... Basically, Rhydon doesn't have anything too scary. In fact, the only move it can hit me with is Fury Attack, which is not very good. But if it uses that enough times, it will start to add up. It also has Leer and Tail Whip, which will badge boost me, but I should level up in the middle of this battle. And that's just lowering my defense, which is bad. Kind of nullifying my Reflect. I would have preferred more Horn Drill or Misses with Fury Attack. I am at 91 health, but with all those defense drops I just suffered, not really certain how this is going to look. But... Hey, we are halfway done. And that's not true because we have another Gyarados, so we're actually two-thirds done. And there's the level up. So I don't think Thunderbolt will knock it out now. And maybe it would have if I got badge boost and of course take down. Okay, I'm still around. That's kind of nice. 27 HP, but that means I have to one-shot Venusaur. Is that a thing I can do? I don't know. Five hit critical hit pin missile. Let's do it. I don't know what the odds of that are, but that's what we're hoping for. All right, one, no crit. And only two. And Razor Leaf. Ah, uh, that was so annoying. And like, that's kind of how I have to do it. You know, I could delete agility, but then I can't badge boost for double kick. So I'll knock out right on sooner. I can't get rid of pin missile. I need that for Venusaur. Man, I just don't know. You know what? I am going to do one thing, though, because as I start to do these runs, I realized Agatha was too inconsistent. So I manipulated my experience by battling one Golbat in Victory Road. This way, I would level up just before I battled Agatha, making it an optimal time to use my rare candies. And that made Agatha a heck of a lot more consistent. No more three-hit KOs. In fact, even the second Gengar is a two-hit KO, although I did get a crit this time, but... Pretty sure even without the crit, it would have been a 2 KO. And even though we've seen this battle four times, I am going to commentate because it has been a real thorn in my side. We are one for four. Battle Fival versus Lance. Let's do it. Now this may shock you, but I do knock out Gyarados with Thunderbolt. I know. Have never seen that one before. Once again, I'm going to set up Reflect right away. Slam is good. And now I'm going to need some crits because I cannot use agility to get some badge boosts. No crit there, Dragon Rage, don't want to see that, but I definitely do want to see that. Okay, Dragonair 1 down, 110 HP, that's okay, that's okay. Alright, come on, get a crit. No, we get a Paralysis, but it hits with Dragon Rage. 70 HP for Dragonite, looking kind of dicey, but we can do it. Just got to knock out this Dragonair here, and yes, that was great. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, again, shocking, we knock out Aerodactyl, who cares? Dragonite, just don't use Hyper Beam. Come on, be a pal. All right, get a critical hit. Paralysis is good. Agility, very, very good. Come on, critical hit here. Wow, Dragonite outsped me even though it's paralyzed. That's weird, isn't it? Anyway, knock it out. No, no, and now it can heal. Please don't heal. I still don't know how this thing's outspeeding me. Slam. Okay. Two for five. Goodness, Lance has been a real thorn in my side lately. But the champion definitely wasn't easy. Making it to the last Pokemon was... A little bit of a mirage since I was at such low health, it basically didn't matter. I'm really going to need double kick to make a difference, or else maybe I'm going to have to use mimic instead of something. I don't know, but rematch versus the champion. Despite all these failed attempts, sub four hours is possible. Can we clutch it out? Let's find out. All right, well, the Pidgeot section is much quicker. I go for reflect it. Mirror moves reflect. That's useless for you. And I knock it out. So that's one down. Now, I was curious how much Thunderbolt would do. Pin Missile is almost definitely a 2 KO anyway. Doesn't even do half. And Psychic. Okay. No special drop, no crit. Did a lot of damage, though. And now I need at least a 3-hit Pin Missile. One, two, three. Three Pin Missiles. We did it. Okay, that's Alakazam. We are not in the clear. 
Right on can deal a bunch of damage if this takes too long. We actually got a little lucky in that respect last time. All right, how much does Double Kick do? Nothing. Like, it's better than Pin Missile, but it's going to be so slow. I need a crit. All right, well, it goes for Leer, which can make a difference for our Canine, as we saw. Another Double Kick. And Fury Attack. Two, three, four. Gosh. 65 HP. That's not great. All right, critical hit. Finish it off. Nope. And another Leer. And now we will... Oh, my gosh. That's a crit... You know what, game? That's not very nice. Okay, so there are two Pokemon left in a second. Okay, there are two Pokemon left. Sometimes our Canine goes for Roar. I would be very pleased with a Roar or a Crit, either or. All right, show me the Crit. Show me the Crit. No. Oh, we got Roar. That's good. Okay, okay, okay. We have a nice amount of health for Venusaur. Come on, this is too perfect. We have to beat Venusaur. Come on, crit five hit pin missile. All right, one, two, this is great. Three, you know what, that's good. Solar beam, we won. Yes. Man, this was frustrating. I didn't really know what to do. You know, after using legendaries for so long and trying to go fast, this actually was a really, really difficult run. I don't know if we did it under four hours. Once Professor Oak is done blabbing, we're gonna have to check and no <laughs> by three minutes okay that's kind of funny and just to quickly talk about the tier list this is gonna go in the ghastly tier i think it wasn't minimum battles but it did have a significant time save for now i'm gonna put it ahead of ghastly anyway that's all for this video stay tuned to see if flareon or vaporeon can beat the four hour mark heck can they make it competitive with the legendary birds i have no idea i haven't done the runs yet so I'm going to go get to that, and thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.